Listen, I made a comment last night about the booking of this show. I said, you know what? Last night was a night where, okay, I've seen this show a hundred times. I need something different. We've got a pay-per-view coming up on Saturday. I don't care if it's Damian Priest cashing in. I don't care if it's Drew McIntyre winning the title. I don't care if it's, like, whatever. But I need something to kind of mix stuff up here. Because it's Groundhog Day on this show. And then, some guy on the board was like, Hold on a second! Well, we've never seen Dom and Ricochet before. Oh, well, so... We... Are we really at that point where yeah. we have to literally explain that there is a an actual new man? Uh, bros, I get it, nerds. S- My point here, nerds. is, it's the same show. The Judgment Day comes out. They say they run Raw. Then some combination of Cody or Sammy or whoever comes out. We set up a main event for later. The Judgment Day has dissension throughout the show. Priest has to say, you know, there's no leader, but then Rhea has to act like the leader. Then we got some random matches here. I got that they're not the exact same matches. I got that they didn't do the exact same lineup. But you know what? You know what? What's up? Well, they've got the pay-per-view coming up. And they added a pre-show match to Crown Jewel. And as God is my witness, and it is, this is not because I have concussion issues, this is not because I'm old, but literally the match that they announced for the pre-show was Sami Zayn and JD McDonough. And when I saw that, I swear to God, my first thought is, did I not just watch that exact same match on this show? Yeah, but not in Saudi Arabia. And the answer is, I didn't. No. But I saw some combination of Sami's crew versus Judgment Day. For the 15th straight show, and, like, I got it. I got it. Now, let's uh, let's move on with this. Let's change things up a little bit. Yeah, well, and that's the biggest thing at three-hour show. It wasn't like it was a bad show or anything like that, or you don't want to force feed Judgment Day and Imperium as, you know, the, the kings of this show. But with that said... You can do more in between a lot of that stuff that will shake things up and make it feel a little bit of a more fresher show. And they, to me, they certainly didn't do that last night. This guy is clearly not a viewer. He goes, well, business is booming. What's the issue? Do you know why business is booming? Because we had a period starting around the Royal Rumble where they had a whole bunch of stories and there were twists and there were turns and people joined this group, and they got out of that group, and they broke up with this guy, and they, they there was storytelling. And there is still storytelling on Raw, but because it's fall and it's football season, it's like we're in that holding pattern. This happens every year. And that's fine to kind of slow things down for a little bit so you can build it up again at Royal Rumble season, but I need something. Some sort of switch needs to happen somewhere because right now it's just the same show. So uh, it opened up with Rhea, Dom, and JD came out. We're the Judgment Day. We run the show. Sami Zayn interrupted. I will beat you guys until I'm dead. Rhea said, that's ridiculous. Why don't you face Damian Priest tonight? Dom said, let's teach him a lesson. They jump him. Ricochet makes the save. I feel like I've seen this segment a thousand times. So then, yes, we did have a match we haven't seen. It was Dom versus Ricochet. But you know what the finish was to this match we haven't seen? What's the finish we've seen to every match in the last eight weeks? Mommy! Out comes Rhea. They, her and JD take the ref. Ricochet lays out JD. Dom rolls him up, feet on the ropes, pins him. Okay? I got it. I've seen this before. Now, this was followed by something new and good. It was the Creeds versus Alpha Academy. And it was a good match. And they had a spot near the end. The only the only negative to this match is, man, I was so excited to see Brutus and Otis in there together. And, man, they were lost. They got totally lost for about 30 seconds. And then they just got out of there. And then it was fine afterwards. But, man, they could not figure out 
Like, what was going on? So then, then once well, they're they not uh, polished pros, either one. Perhaps. Once they got the heat on Chad, uh, then it was good, and he finally hits his deadlift German on Brutus, the big one. And Otis makes the comeback. Otis has now ru- added a running forward roll in his comeback, which gets a pop every time. It's like super porky. Every now and then you do something outrageous and you'd be like, what? And so then they did a big spot where Otis hits the world's strongest slam on Brutus, which is a big spot. And then Julius breaks it up with a 450. And then Chad comes off with a moonsault onto the pile. And then Maxine and Ivy got into a brawl. Julius got a blind tag. Julius gets Otis on his shoulders, walks backwards. Brutus hits the Brutus bomb, and they pin him clean. It was a great debut. Uh, They basically said it was a call-up. All four guys shook hands afterwards. This was good. When Otis holds his arm straight down, do they even reach his belly button? It doesn't look like it. Well, because they go out. He's a gigantic, I mean, just he's like a, a crocodile or something there, just with these little arms, that huge body. And you know what? Super Porky had an MMA fight. I heard you and Dave talking about Deontay Wilder. Book it. Otis against Deontay Wilder MMA contest. Let's go. Then we had Miz TV with uh, Gunther. And first, Kaiser and Vinci come out, and they make fun of Miz, and Miz makes fun of them. And then Gunther comes out. And he says, this ring is sacred to me. Everything you do here is beneath me. You are beneath me. I don't respect you. And then Miz makes fun of him for not being entertaining. And Gunther says, listen, when the bell rings, when it gets serious, the only thing that matters is how good of a wrestler you are. That's why you're running a talk show. Well, now Miz is mad. You know what Miz does when he's mad? He reads his stupid resume. (laughs) Gunther's laughing as he's rattling off these things that he did a decade ago. And Miz says, I'm going to take that belt from you. And Gunther says, are you serious? That's when the fans chanted, kick his ass. And then Kaiser starts destroying pumpkins. They get into a brawl. And uh, Miz gets beaten down. Miz then goes and cries his note to Adam Pearce. Pearce says, why would I give you a title match? Miz starts his stupid resume again. Pearce says, please stop. I got someone else I'm talking to. In walks Bronson Reed. Miz goes, all right, fine. But I'm going to take that belt from Gunther. So next week, there's a four-way. I don't know if people just try to to crack Gunther or if he has just incorporated blowing people off, like starting to laugh a little bit into, you know. Well, that's the the only obvious thing that Gunther would do when the Miz is standing in front of you acting like a tough guy and reading off his resume. But he's done that a couple of times during promos where he's kind of laughed off a gable or laughed off somebody that was talking to him. He should. I love it. But that's the thing is he doesn't overdo it. So whether they're making him crack or not, it's just the whole presentation and how he carries himself during it is fantastic and helpful to his character. We had DIY versus Vinci and Kaiser. And the match was fine. But the big difference is that when DIY was in NXT, it was like that was their act. And the fans loved them. And this is a... You know, a WWE crowd. And, you know, they got into the baby face and everything, but it was not like the old school DIY reaction. And they hit their double knee. They got the pin on poor Vinci. And Ludwig was disgusted. Save us, Dexter Loomis. We had Candice LeRae, who is not Candice Michelle, <laughs> against Xia Lee. And She's yelling uh, at Molina at a conference right now. So they, they want to get over the knockout finish, but they they didn't do it. They did it better than they would have, like, two years ago, but still, it was like, Xia Lee hit her with a move, Candace went out, the referee just holds Xia Lee back, which is like, you would never do that. Is it, Are you stopping it or not? And then she lets it go, even though Candace is unconscious. Xia tries to lift her, but Candace is dead weight, so the referee still won't stop. She's like, hold on, I gotta make sure that she's living, and then finally this ref calls for the bell. These refs need uh, training. Because this was incompetence. They're all licensed from Texas, apparently. But the idea is that Xia Lee is a, is a knockout artist. <laughs> Jey Uso met with Sammy, and uh, he's still in a Rhea Ripley, apparently. Had several promos with the women hyping up the Crown Jewel women's title match. And then the best thing on the show, a Drew McIntyre video package. You guys got to go watch this. I don't know this 100%, but I'm pretty sure this was a Jeremy Borash production. 
And I know that because it started with a drone shot, which is the key giveaway. But uh, Drew is reminiscing. And he says, man, I won that Royal Rumble. And I was on my way to WrestleMania. And all of these fans were behind me. And everything is going great. Tens of thousands of fans. I'm going to win the title. And then the pandemic hit. The most memorable uh, the most memorable day of my career in front of nobody. An empty building. And it pissed me off. And I busted my ass year. I just, I, everything I could as champion. But by the time those fans came back, I wasn't champion anymore. And I worked for years to get that moment back that I never got. And finally it was my chance at Clash of the Castle. And the bloodline screwed me. So no, I have not forgiven the bloodline and I'm not gonna. But I will make it right at Crown Jewel. He says, Seth, he's willing to break his back for that title. Well, you know what? I'm willing to break his back for the title. And he was my first opponent in 2020. And I will be his last. This was awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And then Seth comes out. And he does a promo, and he says, cry me a river, dude. He says, everybody was fighting a battle in 2020, not just you. A lot of people had it a lot worse than you did. Some people weren't sure they were ever going to see their family again. Some people never did. Mm. I was like, wow. Well, it's true. It is true. He says, excuse me for not feeling sorry for you, that you didn't get to win the title the way you dreamt it, blaming your failures on the bloodline get in line people like sammy and cody they're not crying and asking for pity he says if you can beat me saturday i'll be the first guy to shake your hand and call you champ and then we had seth and jd which seth won pedigree and stomp we had uh, becky promo about losing the nxt title and then up walks zia lee zia goes how come you won't fight me becky goes let's fight right now zia goes ah we'll do it on my time and then Becky, literally, my exact thought, she goes, what's your time? You've been crying for three weeks. I've offered you a fight time after time, and you won't take it. So at some point, years from now, we might get Zia Lee and Becky. Then we had a, God, that collision match with Ikaru Shida and uh, Abaddon. Abaddon was like, it was terrible. And at the time, I said, you know, I, I understand doing holiday matches. I, if you want to do something that WWE does, fine. You just got to do it the same or better. And this was not as good as the two NXT Halloween Havoc matches. Well, now I must apologize because it was miles better than this Natty Chelsea trick or street fight. It was all comedy. It was like just wacky. And then uh, Chelsea won. I, I got nothing more to say. It was just like, this was one of those matches where we'll make people not turn the channel because they just can't tear themselves away from this train wreck. That's what this was. <laughs> what did you think about Piper Niven as Jim Neidhart? She was the highlight of the <laughs> match by miles. Chelsea as is, is, uh, Jim Neidhart was great. And then Sammy beat, uh, actually, no. We'll talk about the main event after the break. I have run out of steam. Sorry. Observer Live. So the main event was Sammy and Damian Priest. You know the gimmick. Judgment Day ran down. Blah, blah, blah. Jay hit the ring to make the save. Super kick Priest for the DQ. Sucked. This main event sucked. This finish especially. But the post-match was really good. So they're jumping down Sammy. And the fans know they start chanting for Cody. And, uh, and he's limping a little bit, but he comes down to make the save. And we get this giant brawl. And they had the greatest... I mean, say what you will about camera shots. The camera shot of 2023 was when JD saves Priest from the crossroads on the table. And he throws him over like the timekeeper's table in the crowd. And he's looking over the table. And then he turns around and they zoom right in. Boom on his face as he turns around. And all of a sudden you just see Sammy's mood go, BAM! Right in the face. They throw this poor geek on the table. Cody hits him with the crossroads, hits him with his second one for good measure. The place was going nuts for this this uh, post-match here. So uh, thank God they, they ended the show with that because if they would have ended with just that stupid DQ, ugh, I'd have really gone off today. 
But an excellent uh, excellent deal setting up all the matches for the pay-per-view uh, Saturday, which uh, we'll be talking about then. I got to hit a uh, cage match to see if J.D. McDonough has won a match since he's been up on the main roster or not. I wonder if he gets a victory over Sami Zayn on Saturday. Right. I doubt it in Saudi Arabia. I highly, highly doubt it. His <laughs> job is to do jobs at this point. Not heat. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. You have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.